Okay, I want to go over the solar equipment um, I'm going to use for the Solar UMPC tour next week, hopefully, and try and explain uh, the system or the, the method I'm going to use to, to load up these devices. The, these are the devices that I'm going to take with me. It's uh, Samsung Q1B, um, a torch, GPS logger, that's a Garmin E-Trex, and a 3G mobile phone, that's a Nokia 62. And the challenge is to get power from the sun into these devices. So, of course, the first thing we need to, to look at is the solar panel. A solar panel will convert sun power to electricity in one go. But it's not just as simple as that because, uh, as I'll show you in a few minutes, there's a few, uh, few issues with batteries, with storage, with buffering, with fluctuating voltages and um, we need to solve all those problems with other bits of technology. So here's the solar panel. It's a Sunlink 25 watt, 12 volt solar panel. It's um, on a rubberized sheet with four main solar panels in it and an output here. Uh, 25 watts is the maximum output uh, energy of this of this device. So that means only when uh, you're in a sort of midday full sun situation, you're going to get that that amount of power out of it. These devices um, take um, different input voltages and have different power requirements. Uh, for example, the Samsung Q1 takes 19 volts input and the battery is uh, 30 watt hours. Uh, this takes double A batteries in the back, this takes uh, 5 volts input, and this takes a couple of uh, treble A batteries. So we need to, to convert the voltages and um, with various bits of equipment. Now, uh, in a lot of high-tech equipment, what you find is uh, lithium-ion battery technology. Here's a battery from the Samsung Q1, weighs about 300 grams and stores about 60 watt hours of, of energy. It's very um, lightweight and um, a sort of a very sort of high power to, to weight ratio. And you compare that to some old technology. This is a, a lead acid battery, a smaller version of something you'll find in a car. And this is about the same uh, um, capacity as the lithium ion battery. This takes about 70 watt hours of, uh, stores about 70 watt hours of energy, 12 volt output. This weighs two and a half kilos, but there are reasons why we might want to use this over this. One of the problems we have is that the chemistry in the lithium ion batteries requires some fairly um, fairly careful control over the charging process. Um, there's a number of methods that are used to charge lithium-ion batteries, uh, pulsing, but what it also requires is some electronic circuitry to, to monitor how much charge has gone in, to make sure it doesn't go over voltage, under voltage, too little current, too, too much current, etc, etc. So although this is the battery, what you need in addition to this is charging circuitry. And I've got uh, here uh, an equivalent sized battery with charging circuitry integrated. So this is a standalone battery pack, it's the MP3400 from Tablet Kiosk. It takes 60 watt, or 56 watt hours of, of energy, 19 volts in and various voltages out. So it's a fairly flexible little unit. The only problem with it is that um, you have to supply a fairly steady 19 volts and you have to be able to supply uh, at least sort of 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of an amp to it before it even starts charging. Excuse me. Sorry about that, that was the wife. So what was I saying? Um, the problem is you need a fairly steady voltage, fairly steady current uh, of, a, of a certain level to even begin charging this thing. So what happens is when when the sun is not uh, powerful enough, there's, there's not enough energy coming through this system to even start charging this. So you have no possibility to get any energy out of the sun at all. In the case of this solar panel, um, you're looking at about 70% sun power before the, before the system starts to work. The other problem is, um, 
<coughs> the voltage as well. We've got 12 volts coming out of here. You need 19 volts going in there. So we need to convert that as well. So you end up with some complexities there that uh, make it very inefficient. What we need to do is be able to get uh, energy out of the sun at low sun levels and, and trickle charge something. That's not possible with these, these batteries. So what you end up with is, is, is using an old lead acid uh, battery. Uh, this is 100 year old technology but there is nothing really um, that's as flexible um, as this technology um, and, and that's lightweight. So you end up with two and a half kilos of, of lead here um, to, to enable a sort of ch uh, trickle charging process. So let me show you how that uh, charging process works and what equipment we use to, to charge these, this battery and then the equipment we use to charge the other things. The first thing we need to do is to protect the lead acid battery from being overcharged or undercharged. Although it will take a trickle um, charge, it will uh, be damaged if you overcharge it or let it undercharge. So what you have is a device called a, a solar charge controller. This is, I don't know what's inside here, but basically it will uh, ensure that um, the voltage uh, coming out of here doesn't go above 13 or 13 and a half volts, and it doesn't go under 11.5 volts. And basically it allows you to input um, charge into the battery and at the same time take charge out of the battery. So it's, it's a regulator. That's not possible with these. It's another disadvantage with the lithium ion. You charge it and then you use it. You can't use it at the same time as charging. So there's a solar regulator. It's quite a cheap device, 20 euros. And we plug that into the, the battery. So on the solar regulator there's a input and output and this is the, the 12 volt output. So now what we have is the ability to trickle charge into here and to take 12 volts out whenever we need it. Whenever we need it. As long as there's charge in here or as long as there's energy coming from the solar panel we should have power here. Now as we've talked about before um, We've got a slight voltage differential we need to sort out here. This is 12 volts out and the Samsung Q1 needs 19 volts in, this needs 19 volts in, this needs to have a couple of batteries charged and this needs 5 volts in. So what we can do is use a, a system of um, connectors and converters to, to sort that problem out. The first thing that uh, I've done is to put everything on uh, cigarette lighter type uh, sockets, and if you can see that, but this is a something socket that you'll find in a in a car. So now we've got a sort of standard connector that we can use for adapters. Many devices actually come with, uh, or at least you can buy, 12 volt adapters. For example, here's a, a Nokia charger which has got the cigarette plug on it, and so I can plug that into there. You can see this charge already in the battery, and then I can plug that into the phone, and the phone's charging. Let's just zoom in on that. So that's uh, the phone sorted out. The other things we need to sort out are the uh, batteries. So what I've got here is a standard charger which has again a 12 volt input so I can plug that in there, plug that in there and those batteries start charging. The advantage with this uh, little unit is that if I put four batteries in it charges at a fairly low rate so the current going through here is fairly low so if this is low sun power I can still connect this to it. If I switch to two batteries, it actually switches into a fast charge mode and you get about a treble or four times the amount of uh, current going through the system. Um, so if there's a lot of power available, I can do quick charging as well. Um, it will also take the small size batteries that I need for this torch as well. So, so that's the AA charging solution, battery charging solution. Now we need to look at the computer, the UMPC.